So we can take another look at an important concept, which we could call n tiles. And this is an important activity of mathematicians, which is to take a look at a concept and ask yourself, well, how can you generalize this? What can you do to make this apply to more things or to broaden our definition? And one of the hallmarks of thinking mathematically is whether or not you get into the habit of asking, how can I generalize an idea? And in this particular case, we have this concept of the median. And what does the median do? Well, the median separates the data into two sets of equal size. So the generalization, maybe I can set, divide these, separate the data into a bunch of sets of equal size. And so this is where our concept of n tiles comes from. We're going to separate the data into n sets of equal size. While we could have seven tiles or nine tiles, there's actually only a few commonly used separations. So one, I could separate the data into two equal sets. We should call this a two tile or a duo tile, but we just call it the median because we've already introduced that term. But a generalization, uh, one of the common separations is to separate the data into four equal sets, and this produces the quartiles. Uh, we could also try separating into 10 equal sets. That's going to produce the deciles. And then finally, we might separate into 100 equal sets, and this produces the percentiles. As with the median, the median is the value that separates the data into sets of equal size. And correspondingly, the n tile is the value that separates the sets. However, one important thing is that in common usage, uh, the n tile is usually used for the values in the equal sets as well. Uh, how you speak influences how you think. So it really is best if you talk about the n tile producing or corresponding to the set and not to say that the values are in the n tile. So, for example, let's take a look at a bunch of data values. Maybe it looks something like that. And we'll note that the values here are actually in order, which is important because if they're not in order, we can't reasonably separate the sets. And there's 12 values. I'll count them up. There's 12 values altogether. So I'm going to divide these values into sets of four sets. I'm looking for the core trials. I'll divide it into four sets, and that means that there's going to be three items in each set. So this first set of three, that first, those first three values form a set. I'll put a divider up. The next set of three, that'll be a next set. The next set of three, that'll be our next set. And so there's my values. There's my dividers, and I'm going to have to determine what numbers actually produce those divisions. And those are going to be the number that is between these two. And as with the median, we'll split the difference. We'll find the number that's right in the middle. So between these two values here, that's going to be 3.5. Between these two values here, right in the middle, 6.5. Between these two values, well, they're exactly the same value. So the number in the middle is the number itself. And that gives us our quartiles. And so we have our first quartile, 3.5. This is the first quartile. Important to remember how you speak influences how you think. The first quartile is the number, and this corresponds to the values 2, 2, and 3. This is not the first quartile. These are the values produced by the first quartile, the values that correspond to the first quartile. Likewise, I have the second quartile, 6.5, and again, the quartile itself is the actual value, and it corresponds to a set of data values, 4, 5, and 6. Now, note that the second quartile is also the median, because it's divided, the set, into 1, 2 quarters, and 1, 2 quarters. Half the values are up here, half the values are down here. So the second quartile corresponds to the median. The third quartile, that third dividing point, is going to be 9, and that's going to correspond to the values 7, 7, and 9. Now, you'll notice that we've talked about the values in the first quartile, the values corresponding to the first quartile, the values corresponding to the second, the values corresponding to the third quartile, but then we have said nothing about these values. So sometimes we might say that they're the values in the fourth quartile, but keep in mind that there's no actual fourth quartile value. The quartiles are the dividing points, and there's only three of them. So there is no fourth quartile, 
but there are the remaining values.